Hello and welcome to another segment of Western Wisconsin Journal. I'm Jamie Johnson, uh, the legal and government correspondent, and today we have a leader in our government, local government, Mayor Al Burchill. Mayor, thanks for joining us. I have my pleasure, Jamie. And uh, of course, we should say that this is uh, your mayor of the city of Hudson. You've been the mayor how long? Uh, December of 2010, when uh, uh, Mayor Knudsen resigned and took his position in the assembly. Okay. And uh, that's right, he ran while he was still mayor, and then, of course, uh, somebody had to be promoted, and you were the man. I was appointed by the city council. Okay. And uh, you were on the city council prior to that for how many years? I, uh, I was elected in 2007 and ran for re-election in 2009, okay. so about two, three and a half years. Okay. And you've run twice then as mayor? Just once. Just once. Okay. I uh, yeah, ran in last year. Okay. So no re-election yet. You were appointed and then elected and... Yep. Right. Got it. Well, we're here to talk about you know, kind of the state of the city of Hudson. Okay. Um, we know that Hudson has been a growing community. I mean, over the years, I've been here 23 years. And how long have you been a resident? I moved here in uh, 18, or 18, 1989. 89. So you, house. Same time. Yep, yep. About a year before. So a lot of changes in that time, um, both Hudson, North Hudson, and our surrounding townships. I think we have uh, approximately 30,000 people in those municipalities and with S City of Hudson being the center we've got um, all these services that are being provided. Let's start with the budget because when it comes to uh, the government I mean you've got to run things and uh, as I understand it Hudson's budget is not much different than a lot of municipalities where public works and public safety make up the sure. big majority of it. Is that right? That's correct. Uh, our, our total budget is about 9.1 million dollars and of that, 7.7 uh, 7 is operating. The rest is for our debt service and our interest payments that we have, our capital expenses. Uh, one of the things about the city of Hudson is that we have a very small amount of debt on our city. I think it's about $8 million. That includes all for our roads or buildings or anything we own. So um, part of the advantage of that is our, our, our rate is a lot lower on our loans that we get when we go out to bond because of our limited amount of debt. I think we could uh, probably add, if we were wanted to add another $60 million in debt, we aren't going to do that, but we have a very high threshold of uh, borrowing ability that we don't do. But of our $7.1 million, about 37% of that is police. Um, the fire is about 6.5%. EMS is 2%. So that makes up a good percentage of our, our, of our budget. Oh, about 45% or just a little bit less than half is public Correct. safety. Correct. And then what's the next largest? Next largest is our public works, which means our snow plowing, street maintenance, uh, parks. Well, parks are separate. We have another 4% for parks. But uh, again, maintenance of our parks and those kinds of things, it's, it's public works, streets, plowing. And uh, that's almost one-fourth of the budget there. Correct. And, you know, in terms of... Uh, how is that going this winter with the winter that we've had? It's a little more uh, extreme winter than we've had the mild winters the last few years. I think we've, uh, it's been about average. Uh, you know, last year was super good for us. We saved a lot of money. The year before was, we were over budget a long ways because of the amount of snow we had. But this year is about an average, back to about an average year for us. You know, the last couple of weeks has been a little bit more active than we normally get. Every we go out with about two inches. We send our plows out, and and a lot of these snows have been just under two yep. inches. Yep, but we we're still sending them out okay. because of the fact uh, for the ice. We've had a lot of ice on this. So um, one of the things I you know we talk about how do we try and keep our our expenses down? And one of the areas we look at in public works, and we've we've tried really hard because there isn't a lot of room in our budget. Um, one of the things we've done is we've done some pre-wetting of the streets and what that does is it helps keep the salt adhered to, uh, to the street better, okay. which we've reduced our amount of salt that we use. The other thing that we've done is we've invested in the center blade. I don't know if you noticed that or not on the, our trucks. So they don't have to make three trips, they can get it done in two. Okay. And the last thing we did, which wasn't necessarily very popular, was we have a, you have to get your cars off the street. And so it, it saved lots of gasoline uh, because they can get the streets done quicker. They don't have to go back again. So we're trying to be more efficient, less fuel used, less overtime, because we have to be more efficient. Are, are citations issued? Yes. And are people towed? Uh, after three. 
Okay. So they'll get a citation, I think, for ten dollars, and I'm not about. I don't know exactly how much. It's ten, twenty-five, and then they're towed. Okay. So it's three. So we would never tow a car right away. And, and is it? It's just alternating sides, no, or is it's it just completely complete off if it's more than two inches? Okay. And is there a, like a time frame? You know, sending the plows out, I've noticed, I mean, we've had snows that come in the middle of the night. We've had snows that come right at rush hour. Yep. What's the... I think that would be a good question for Tom Zuli. Tom does an excellent job, and, and it's, it's, uh, it's not scientific. Um, we really want to get the main drags done as quick as possible and for safety reasons. And we try to get to the back streets a little bit later, but Tom will look at it two inches. We also call the police department and they say, it's really bad out here. We need to get those plows out as soon as we can. But he watches the forecast. He's got the people on call and uh, they're ready to go when, when he calls. Well, that's what a lot of people are concerned about is if they have, the, if they're a victim of a crime or a victim of a fire, do we have the fire department and the police ready to go and yep. they want to be able to get to work and have yep. my streets plowed? Yep. And we, you know, I, I uh, talk a little bit about our fire department. It's an all-volunteer fire department. And uh, Chief Fry told me last week when we were talking that he's got a full list of candidates now. He's full. And, you know, that... Our, our fire department is, is an excellent fire department, and uh, the amount of money the city and the town save uh, having a volunteer fire department is a lot of money. So really hats off to those folks. Uh, they risk their lives uh, for the fire department, and uh, they don't make a lot of money. But this Well, that's an example of a service. While it's housed and centered in downtown Hudson, uh, it services the the village and the three townships surrounding, um, yep. as we said, approximately 30,000 residents would benefit or potentially from our volunteer fire department. How is that cost then shared? Okay. Uh, three years ago, it was about three years ago, I had just become mayor and they were in the, we were in the process of writing a new agreement. And part of the agreement is how do we assess all of the, our partners? Now, I like to call them partners because they're in it with us. And with that, we take 50% I'm using fire now for an example. 50% is based on, on your uh, population, and 50% is based on the number of calls that you have. So it's, it's kind of a fair formula. Last year, I believe it was the town of Hudson came to us and said, you know, Hudson, you've got a lot more calls and we want to weigh that a little more. So what do you think of that? And we, we uh, did some calculation. We sat down across the table and we ended up, uh, the city of Hudson paying another $25,000 more a year. Um, but it was fair, and, and I think that's the kind of things that uh, we have a really good working relationship. We have a joint fire board, um, and the town of Ch uh, Tim Froster from the town of Hudson is the chair of that committee. And we have two representatives from the city of Hudson and uh, Troy Township and uh, North Hudson. Uh, St. Joe has their own fire department, so we don't uh, service them. Okay. So Same thing with equipment, though, I, not to interrupt you, Jimmy. Yeah, no. Same thing with equipment. Our equipment now is... Uh, we're looking in the next two years, we may need a $500,000 uh, ladder truck. Now, City of Hudson, we're going to share that with our partners, and they will be responsible for that. Whether or not the agreement stays in place, they may, if we buy that, we all have to agree, and they will share in the cost of that. So we're sharing our expenses um, with our partners now, and I think it's, it's, a, it's a fair deal for everyone. We get a really good bargain for our, we get a good uh, bargain for a dollar. All right. Well, and you had mentioned about being able to have a volunteer department saves. What is the cutoff at, when you've looked at other municipalities as far as going to a paid fire department? Do you know Haven't even they... looked at it. Okay. Haven't looked at it. We're, we're years away from that. Anyway. I hope so, yes. because it, it's, uh, we've got uh, good professionals in that uh, department, and Chief Fry does a good job. All right. Well, let's look at the budget from a historical perspective, a little bit of comparison, because you were showing me some statistics as far as like 09 compared to 2013. The, the city budget is not a static thing where uh, police has the same percentage every year and so forth. And yep. um, without going through every single line item, because I think there's about 10 of them, but what are some of the bigger changes that you've noticed between 09 and 2013 as far as makeup of the budget? Well, I, I think most people will be somewhat surprised that uh, in the year 2000 approved budget was $7.745 million. And in 2013, it's $7.651 million. So we've actually reduced our budget by 93,000 over a four-year period, 
or 1.1%, 1.2%. Our police budget, because that's, that's one of our bigger budgets, has actually gone up for uh, $263,000 or about 10%. Um, the public works department, in comparison, has gone down $192,000 and that's about a 9% decrease. So you can see that over a four-year period, we've spent about the same amount of money that we spent four years ago with increased cost of, um, of uh, gasoline. Health insurance has been a big, uh, pro not a problem, uh, expense for us. And one of the things that we try to do is we want to deliver our services as well as we did before or better. Okay. So. That's the $98 question, whether we can continue to uh, you know, you, uh, keep our taxes at zero, which we did this last year, a 0% increase, and still provide the services that we can. And one of, the, you know, one of the things that we look at is we're always trying to do things better. I'll use Tom for example. I think every department's done an excellent job, but we're looking at the LED lights. Right now we spend about $17,000 a month with XL Energy. Okay. And what can we do to cut that in half? And we're looking at the light bulbs, and I think we're getting closer. We're talking about on the street lights now. We're getting closer to the fact where it could be cost effective to replace those. And uh, <coughs> I think that would be something that we're, we've been looking at. The things we do with the, sn the snow plowing is, is another thing we've been doing. And you described that. Yep. And so with the operating budget, as you said, it, the actual overall operating portion of the budget has gone down 1.1%, mm -hmm. um, and yet some big percentage changes when it comes to a big increase for police and for, I think the other one was a library, had a double-digit increase. Well, a lot of that has to do, their operating budget has stayed the same, uh, but the cost of the new building has gone up significantly. Uh, you know, our occupancy expense there was 139000 and now it's 186000 Well, and I want to treat the library a little bit differently because yep. we're going to get to facilities yep. eventually. But I wanted to point out, as with uh, is the case, like for the school district, yep. where not all of their operating budget is paid by taxes. Some of it is state aid or yep. uh, it could be federal aid, um, depending on the type of project. And the city has been a benefactor of some aid. But... It's not, uh, not all municipalities are created equal in that regard. Well, I think one of the things that we've talked about before, or I'd like to talk about, is that we call it revenue sharing. Now, we get some road money, too. I think we get about a half a million in, in roads, but it's called revenue sharing. And there's about 22 communities between uh, 12,000 and 17,000 people. And that's the category that Hudson's in. Yeah. And um, in that amount, I think the average, the high is $4 million in state aid and the low is 197000 This was in the year 2010. Average is about $480,000, and we're at the bottom. So out of those 22 municipalities, we get the least amount of state aid. And I, th I believe it's, it's based on uh, your revenue, your value of your land, your income, and those kinds of things. So again, uh, for example, River Falls gets $2.1 million. Chippewa Falls gets $3.6 million, about the same size communities. Yet... Uh, we have to do, we have a very small percentage of our budget that we get from the state. And most of our budget comes from property taxes in the, at the city level. Okay. And, uh, I mean, depending on the budget cycles and so forth, like the federal, pro there's been federal programs sure. where you've had uh, police grants and so forth. But uh, those are, again, another example, something you can't count on being there every year. And you may not get it either. That's the other thing. It's, uh, you may not be, you may apply for it, but you may not get it. Okay. But usually we won't spend it unless we know we're going to get so it. So roughly of that $7.1 million, how much is actually generated by property taxes? Um, probably all but $600,000. Okay. And, uh, and I meant to also talk about sales tax because here in St. Croix County, anyone shopping knows that uh, even for clothes, you yep. have to pay that extra half percent. How much of that is coming back to the city? Zero. None? None. Zero, Jamie. It all goes to the county. State, uh, state will not allow us to collect sales tax. Only a county can do that. But so, doesn't the county want to share since, you know, the commerce is in the cities? I don't think that they use that for the roads in our uh, for the benefit of our county. Okay. But we do not get any aid from the county for roads 
of the sales tax dollars, to my knowledge. Now, I, I'll have to have Daryl on, <laughs> Daryl Standifer, the county board chair sometime as a well, guest. Well, you can ask him that question. And, and uh, But have they done analysis about where that sales tax comes from? I mean, you have New Richmond and you've got the northern part of River Falls sure. and, and Hudson. I would guess that we have a pretty high percentage with the city proper and our contribution. If you look at our business district and all of our uh, retail stores and car dealerships and those kinds of things. I think we probably have a fairly good percentage. I, I would venture it's, I don't know, 50%. And, and on, so you don't get any sales tax? No. Nope. And what about personal property tax? Does that? Yes, we get, we get some of that from the uh, from business of personal property taxes, yes. Okay. But and, I don't know the exact dollars on that and one. And do you have anything, uh, again, without exact numbers, but a rough breakdown on the support of our city through property tax dollars? How much is business and how much is residential? I don't have that breakdown in front of me. Okay. I don't know that. Right. I, it would be, uh, I can't even, I know our total valuation is about $14 billion. Well, talk, let's talk about valuation because I'm, I'm a town of Hudson resident yep. and I know that uh, they do a reevaluation. I, I don't know, there may be state rules as far as how often you have the minimum amount of time that you do it. but. Mm -hmm with our economy and the rubber band economy we've had over the last five years, I think they've done it a little more frequently. And so I noticed a big drop in my valuation of my house, mm -hmm. which probably properly reflects the market. Yep. How has Hudson dealt with that recently? Well, you know, one of the things that's required by law is that you have to be between, again, I think it's 90 and 110% of value, of market value. So, you know, when the when the houses are going up, you're, you're getting the benefit, and when you're going down, you might get caught. Um, we've just had a revaluation, and if you looked at your last, you live in the in the town, uh, Jamie. How many? How much did your uh, property taxes go up for school? Did it go up at all? I I, I don't, don't know. Remember. Okay. I, I don't know the. All I know is what I pay yep. has been about the same. roughly the same within a hundred dollars for the last <laughs> five years. In the city of Hudson, we went up seven point nine percent from school tax and 7.5% for the county, and 7.5% was mostly the uh, library tax that was put on, and 79 was for the school. And the reason that went up is our valuation didn't drop as much as some of the other folks. So you have a valuation totally for our district. So it wasn't that the school is spending more money than they should. It was because our valuation didn't decrease as much as, let's say, town of Hudson has a lot of land and that went down more than we have commercial property, didn't drop as much as commercial as the land. So, so yeah. even within the same school district, there will be different impacts on property taxes sure. depending on where you're at. Sure. And I did notice that, I think, embarrassingly, uh, but good for me, that town of Hudson is kind of the lowest, I think, sure. um, uh, in property tax overall sure. and what they provide to the school. But uh, these changes and big fluctuations of right. property and, values. And I think, I think we're starting to see um, things coming back, in my opinion. Um, one of the interesting things that we get every, every year, we do a valuation or we get a report from our assessor and our, I mean, our building inspector. And last year in the city of Hudson, we had $58 million in building permits out. Now, yes, two of them were, Uline was 27 of that $58 million. And uh, I think the hospital was seven. So we had two very big projects. But that's a far cry from the 24 the year before, 19 in 2010, and 9 million in 2009. The height of our construction was in 19, 2002 when we had $68 million in uh, valuations and building permits. Well, uh, this most recent 58 is getting pretty close to that. Right. Then. And, you know, I think you can take the U line out, which was 27, but we're seeing a lot more activity. And that's a good thing because these all will be converted into property tax paying uh, residents for us. And, you know, of, of that, uh, residential units is starting to pick up again. It was almost 11, $12 million last year in the city of Hudson only. And is there that much space in the city to be able to put more houses? Yes, I think they, we've got Red Cedar Canyon. I think he told us he did 28 or 18 houses. I don't know what, uh, and that's, I think it was 28. And he came in and got, had some more of his lots. He's getting close to being done there. Okay. So. But uh, in the city, obviously, over the last 20 years, has expanded its borders and sure. it gets more land, both on the commercial side and the residential. But 
uh, they're not quite, it's not quite fully built then. No, and I just, not to, not to correct you, but we don't expand unless people ask. We cannot annex property unless the property owner asks us to uh, annex the property. So we cannot expand our borders without, uh, we have a lot great respect for our neighbors, especially the town of Hudson, because we have a lot of uh, bordering. You know, we can't grow west and we can't grow north because right. of the, so sure. really it's east, which we bump into the town of Hudson, and south is the town of Hudson quite a ways. And, and, and a function, over the last 20 years, it appears that that's been more of a supply and demand thing sure. as well. Uh, when the demand is there, uh, then the requests come out for that annexation, and our, city, our uh, economy has been contracting, and so the, the requests for expansion sure. haven't been there. But in this idea of going back to the revenue sharing and how mm -hmm. little of it the, the, this city gets, the city of Hudson. Part of that is that Hudson is a victim of its own affluence. Or success. Uh, yes, success. If I mean, I, I give a lot of credit to our previous uh, councils and mayors about looking at businesses to come into town in our business park. You know, for a community our size, our business park is, I think, exceptional. And we have, a, I think there's 1,600 jobs up in the industrial park. Those folks don't have to leave town or they come here to work. And that's a good thing. Uh, we don't need to have them all go to Minnesota. Right. And uh, it'd, be, it'd be, you know, it's a U line coming in, it's 165 people coming. Now, they may not all be new jobs to U line, but there's going to be new jobs coming into Hudson. Sure. And those are the kind of things that, you know, once they go here, we have great schools and a good community to live in. Uh, they're going to say, I think we ought to move here. If no, uh, respecting the fact that some of the stuff is in early development and uh, you, not necessarily for public uh, airways, so to speak, but airwaves. Um, Uline obviously is in the pipeline, so to speak, for, for coming on board. Do we have other? I mean, we always hear rumors about this restaurant coming to town or that uh, department store chain. Anything uh, in the next year or I would say that uh, over the last couple months, uh, Denny Darnold feels a lot of those questions, our community development officer um, and city planner, uh, but I've probably met with 15 different companies uh, or people talking about opening a new business, and it's pretty confidential. Uh, they probably don't want their employees knowing, especially if they're coming from a different area or they're going to be relocating. So. There's been more activity in the last couple months than there had been in the previous three years. So there's activity, and, yep. and, and just like there's been uh, construction activity out there, um, not to mention the political developments on the other side of the river with uh, a governor who is proposing tax increases and uh, something that you know could, you know, for instance, if Minnesota starts taxing clothes, I think that changes a lot about where people go to do their clothes shopping. Instead of going over to Woodbury, they can shop right sure. here in Hudson. And that would be a that'd be a good thing. We right. would like to, and I'm sure the county would like to have us collect that five or a half percent sales tax. There you go. So we all win. Um, we've talked about the the projects that are planned and building permits. Uh, let's finish up with facilities, and it's I, you know kind of a broad concept because we've had different guests come on. We've had people talk about the library, and obviously that's gone through a lot of changes. We're in a building now that uh, was. Uh, the second library since I've come since we've come to sure. town, and now the library is in a third building, and then we also have uh, the police, which have changed uh, facilities, and but we still have the fire department in the same spot, and yet we have a city that, while it was uh, commerce based, was downtown here. There's obviously much more commerce going up on top of the hill and around the interstate. So, uh, what is planned for facilities and? If you want to address them in whatever order you, okay. you want to, go ahead. What we did, or what I did, is I asked the council in December whether or not we could uh, authorize Ellers and Associates, our uh, bonding company, to do a, a capital plan for us for the next five years on every piece of equipment and every building that we have. And we went to each of our departments and said, give us a, whistle, a wish list of what you think we should do. So we're going to combine those two. How much can we afford? How much is it going to cost us? And then we get into the uh, idea of that makes sense. I mean, we had done a study on a public safety building probably five years ago. It was eight and a half million dollars, and everybody choked it. They just didn't want to spend eight and a half million dollars on a public safety building. But you know, moving our we pro moving is the wrong word. If we relocate another fire station. 
we probably need to have another fire station centrally, more centrally located for the town and, uh, and for our other partners in, in Troy Township. So, you know, we're looking at that and, and we're looking at land um, where that could possibly be located. I mean, we've talked with uh, St. Croix County, that's not a, you know, their land. We've been talking about doing stuff together with them. Uh, I've talked with Mr. Stanifer about, you know, whether or not a training center for both the Sheriff's Department and the city where we can share the services so we can reduce the cost and share uh, meeting rooms and those kinds of things. So they don't have to build a building, we and they're right next to each other. So we're looking at that. Um, we just started that. Uh, phase. We'll ha hopefully have the rest of it uh, as far as the cost and put into a form by probably March. And then we'll bring it back to the council and say, here's the wish list and it's X over the next five years. And the thing that I, I wanted uh, them to do in our first meeting is come back and say, how much is that going to cost us? How much is it going to cost that taxpayer who owns a $200,000 home if we do all of this stuff? Right. And because I think they need to know that. And, and then there would be a prioritization yes, done right. as well. And, uh, but for example, uh, what we did last year, um, the older part of our town is wearing out. You know, it's, it's an older, our sewer systems and our storm sewer, storm water. Um, and we created a storm water utility. It costs our residents $10 a quarter for uh, storm water utility. I was initial, for years I was against that. We have no other way to fund that. We cannot keep up with the changes in the street, in the uh, storm water uh, without doing that. So we're gonna have a couple hundred thousand dollars a year to fix our, our drains and our stormwater utility stuff. So it, it's a, it's, it's 40 bucks a year, but it's a good investment. We have to take care of our infrastructure. And um, Well, that was gonna be one of, when we talk yeah. facilities, because yep. people look at buildings, they look at uh, our new library slash police uh, yep. department, and uh, something that we can be really proud of. Uh, and you're talking about doing a second location for a fire department yep. someplace that would be nice and centrally located. But there's the unseen part, and that is that infrastructure you talked about. And it's, and it's a... Uh, Which is not cheap. No, and it's not... People don't see any benefit to it. If You know, you don't have a... Usually you might have a nicer street because we have to fix the street after we go underneath. But I'll tell you, it is a... If you, if you looked at... Uh, the, we had a stormwater that dumped into Lake Malu that collapsed. If you go back and look, I didn't even know it existed. We walked down below, it dumps into Malalu, and it was looks like a WPA project. And it probably was built in the 30s. Okay, and, so 80-some years old. Yeah, and it, it just it collapsed. And the sand, and, and we didn't even know it. And then we, we went in and we had to fix it. It was $280,000. We had to fix it. I mean, it was Not just... something you budgeted for. No, and didn't think it was happening. But we, but you know, we had enough money from previous that we'd saved on previous projects, capital projects that we were able to fix it. We were, we were lucky that we had the funds for that. We're trying to be more proactive. But again, it's not a um, situation that is. Uh, folks don't see the benefit, as far as the general public. Okay, here's the, we've gone through different things, and it, something just struck me. It's kind yep. of not on topic of facilities very indirectly, but it is on taxes. And one tax that is charged that we haven't talked about is the room tax uh -huh. on, with the hotels. And that's something that was in our paper here recently uh, yep. about the questioning maybe the use of that. Mm -hmm. um, not every community is has as many hotels space as we have here in Hudson where that can make a difference. But uh, what are we doing with the room tax charge and how much of that is actually something the city has control over? Okay, that, uh, that particular law, and I'm not sure the year 84, 74, the state allowed the cities to charge a room tax. Um, the city of Hudson elected to get into it right away, which means they charge a, a fee for every hotel room. Um, our statute says we have to spend at least 40% of that in the promotion of tourism, okay? About five years after that, the state changed it and said all the new ones have to be at 70% of their room dollars. So one of the things that we've been trying to do is uh, 
I think it was four years ago we elected to, we brought it to the council and it was, I think it was passed unanimously that we work from a 60 to 65 to a 70 percent to our directly to tourism related in, uh, purposes. Uh, the city council has uh, voted and uh, for the last probably 15 years to give that to the Hudson Area Chamber of Commerce and Tourism Bureau. And they use those dollars to promote the city of Hudson through various uh, uh, magazines and promotions. And if you look on the uh, website for the uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce, it's a uh, vast majority of their stuff comes from room tax dollars funded by the uh, visitors who come into this town. Now, last year, I believe the number is about $160,000. So 70% of that is 112, 120,000 for that goes to the chamber. They give us a quarterly report and then an annual report of how the money was spent. The rest of the dollars, um, the other 30% can be used for anything we want. Okay. And really, you could say any of the 60% could be used for anything we want. We have elected or we voted to use 70% for tourism. For example, and I didn't bring it along, but we, spent, we have a fireworks on the 4th of July. We spend $10,000 for that. We have a concert in the parks. I believe that's about $7,000. Um, the Phipps gets $1,000. Hot Air Fair gets $2,000. The Miss Hudson gets $2,500. Um, who am I missing? Senior Citizens gets $2,500. Um, we do baskets and banners along the street. That uh, probably is five, six thousand. 6000 We give... Um, we grant uh, 8000 to our cemetery. And everybody says, How does, what does that have to do with tourism? Well, the, the uh, cemetery has been struggling. And under state law, if the cemetery goes under, guess who gets to take it over? The city. Okay. And it would cost us a whole lot more than 8000 to run the cemetery. So we are helping them get back on their, their feet a little bit. Okay. So... Um, the end of the year, we probably had an extra $12,000 by the time we were done. So, and again, we don't know exactly how it's going to go. It's, a re, it's reported on a quarterly basis. And it's, it, last year went up. So there's another indication things are starting to, uh, the two previous years had declined in revenue. We also have a new hotel that opened up last year, about midway through the year. So those dollars are, um, it's, a, it's a significant number of dollars, but... Um, we've never used those dollars for operating expenses. Okay. Now, I had read something. It's been a few years. Mm -hmm. What happened to the project? We were going to have a convention center or hotel over by where Exit 3 used to be, the old Highway 35. Yeah. I haven't heard anything about that. that the, okay. The, uh, you know, I, I don't, you know, with the economy changing, I think right. folks kind of said we better hold back on some of that stuff. But I have not heard of anything like that. It's been brought up in the last year anyway. Okay. But generally for your outlook for the rest of 2013 for City of Hudson is what? Oh, we're positive. It's, uh, I think when you, when you say that last year we did, you know, uh, $47 uh, million dollars in, in new, was it 47, Jamie? Let's see. $58, 58 million, yeah. million dollars in, in uh, valuation building permits. That's a positive. It, it's going to bring... Uline alone will bring us $400,000 to our tax rolls, just that particular project. Roughly 50% of that goes to the school district. So $200,000 is coming right to the school on that, and the rest is divided between the state. Uh, us, We get about $0.24 cents on that dollar, and then the state. Yeah. So about one quarter of all the property tax bill on either a yep. residence or a business is yep. coming back to the city. city. So, you know, we're, we're optimistic. Um, We've had uh, one of the th other things, you know, we've, we haven't laid anybody off. We've given our employees a 1% pay raise, which isn't a lot, but w we were happy to be able to give them something over the last two years. Uh, we wish we could give them more, but we can't. It's just How about health care? Because with any employer, the health care expenses has been, um, you know, a large part of, well, and I'm thinking yep. of the teachers in particular, um, where they were able to do some changes down in Madison, and now the school district has saved lots of money there. Um, has the city been ahead of that curve as far as uh, yeah, we how left, they bid out the We years? left the uh, state fund probably, I think it was the second year I was on council. We were at 2008, maybe it was 2009. 
that we uh, went out and bid the thing, and we went with a uh, we went with a private carrier, and uh, I think we saved uh, over the years, the first three years, we'd saved over four hundred thousand dollars just by going outside uh, to bid that. Now we've had some issues with some huge increases, like a lot of folks, and so we've been we've been dealing with that, and we're asking our employees to pay a. Uh, some more of the of the bill each month, so it's it's a struggle on the health insurance, and we have a forty five hundred dollar or a four thousand dollar deductible for our folks. Well, you mentioned no layoffs, and I yep. think that's what, uh, no matter what kind of portion of public sector employment, people would at least appreciate having a job. We can get into the sure. minutia of uh, the benefits and percentages of who pays what. What about uh, pension, which is yeah. a big concern. We've got a lot of retiring baby boomers. How is the city situated in that regard for its pension? We're fully funded, and of course, uh, with Act 10, 5.8% uh, uh, of our employees now, except the police department, um, has to pay into their retirement. I want to add one more thing. Sure. Uh, you know, we have a group of really dedicated employees at, at the city. Um, uh, city workers or uh, public employees are just like the, uh, the, the uh, public sector. There's some really good ones and there's some that aren't as good. You mean just like the private sector? The too? private sector, rather. I, that's yeah. what I was trying to say. Um, I, you know, I've got to be able to know some of these guys and, the, guys and gals and their dedication to their job is exceptional. And they're up at late at night and and early in the morning and and they can they can do things that um, uh, they can fix uh, some of our folks in public works can fix things that you know no one else could do. Right. So um, we have some really dedicated people and long term people. And so I want to thank them because they do a good job. And you know we we put a hiring freeze on, and we've had it for about three years. And every time we have to replace someone. It's we make the manager go through a lot of hoops to make sure that we can't combine jobs because it's our biggest expense is our, is our personnel. Well, I guess while we're on the subject of thankfulness for public service, I want to thank you for your work as mayor. Uh, again, curious, people talk about, uh, you know, uh, public work. You, this is not your only job, no. uh, being mayor. And well, you know, the, when I decided, uh, Kara Cook was our representative in the sixth ward, and I think she had announced that she wasn't going to run. And I, so I went and talked to her, and uh, my daughter had finished her basketball career, and instead of driving all over the United States, I didn't have to drive to Des Moines every other weekend and central Missouri. And uh, so I had some time, and I've always believed that uh, public service is a, is a good thing, and you got to give back. I make my living here, and if you can contribute, this is the way. It's one way to do it, and uh, it's a. Uh, it's been a very learning, ex good learning experience, and uh, it's a lot of fun. I, I enjoy the budget. Uh, sometimes it isn't always fun, but it most of the time it is. Well, it takes a unique person to consider uh, working with numbers like that fun, but you have a, <laughs> a whole career in banking and, and insurance that, right. that helps you. With I, I like the budget. That's kind of my favorite part of the job. That and talking to businesses that want to come into our community because sure. it's a. Uh, I like uh, talking to business people about what a great place this is to live. And coming from Minnesota, uh, with our schools and our, uh, this is just. If you take a look at that St. Croix River as you cross the bridge, it's probably one of the prettier spots around. Right. So right. we have a lot of good things going on here. Well, with that, we'll uh, end this segment. I want to thank you for coming on the show. Thank you, Jamie. And uh, maybe we'll have you on next year at this time. Uh, Tell well, us about 2014. Sounds good, Jamie. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. And thank you, viewers, for joining us for another segment of Western Wisconsin Journal.